To African leaders, it was a stunning breakthrough. The rest of the world looked on suspiciously as Zimbabwe's political foes, President Robert Mugabe and Prime Minister Morgan Changarai, pledged to govern jointly in September last year. After a bloody and bitter election, sharing power was seen as the only solution to end violence and rejuvenate Zimbabwe's battered economy. So help me God. But five months of more disagreements followed before a unity government was actually formed. And as new ministers were being sworn in, the coalition was thrown into further disarray. The MDC's candidate for Deputy Agriculture Minister and a long-time enemy of Mugabe's ZANU-PF party was arrested and charged with sabotage. Roy Bennett spent a month in prison and Mr Mugabe says he'll only swear him in if he's cleared. The delay uh, which is taking place for his, for his swearing in is deliberate uh, to frustrate him, to frustrate our constituency, to send a message, look, we can do this, we can do this, unilaterally. And that's what we are trying to oppose. This is but one among a litany of problems currently plaguing Zimbabwe's new government. Scores of MDC MPs have been arrested in recent months in an attempt many believe to undermine the party's parliamentary dominance. The MDC has also rejected as unilateral the reappointments of the Governor of the Reserve Bank and the Attorney General. According to the political agreement, Mr Mugabe was to consult Changarai before filling these key posts. But the Minister of State for Presidential Affairs, Didimas Mutasa, insists the two appointments are not covered by the deal because they were made before the unity government was formed. Mr Changarai's concern is no concern at all because these people were appointed before Mr. Tsangirai was appointed. And how could our president consult a person who was not there? Tsangirai has taken his concerns to the Southern African Development Community, or SADC. But if SADC's past support of Mr. Mugabe is anything to go by, it is Mr. Tsangirai who is likely to be pressured to compromise. Most donor countries continue to wait for real change in Zimbabwe before they release financial assistance for the country's economic recovery. And ordinary Zimbabweans are starting to lose faith in their leaders' ability to return their once promising country to democracy. Ngepile Mabuse, CNN, Zimbabwe.